Join me in my time machine. Gerard, it's March the 29th, 2019, hmm. the day the UK leaves the EU. What sort of Brexit are we looking at today on March the 29th, 2019? Well, if we fast forward to next year, two key things will stand out. First, it's in all likelihood clear that we would have done a deal with the EU, a deal that's favourable to the markets and to both sides in terms of both the EU and the UK economy. And second, we will then be entering a transition deal. And it's important to stress, as the Bank of England pointed out yesterday, for the financial markets during that 21-month transition deal, things will be pretty much as they are now. So I think the key thing is, whether you look at the markets or the economies, confidence is a key factor. And there is, as you mentioned, some uncertainty. But I think by next year, people will be more confident because there will be greater clarity and indeed hopefully complete certainty. What gives you the confidence there'll be greater clarity when a year after the process has begun we haven't even started talking about the trade deal yet? Well, it's taken us this long to get this far. Yeah, well, we are where we are. I'm sure many people might have approached it differently, but the reality is that we've gone through the first stage, namely addressing some core issues, in particular the funding arrangement in the future where the UK will basically pay the EU a lot of money, a Northern Ireland issue is still up in the air, but citizens' rights has been clarified. So we've gone through the first process, stage of the process, and now we're entering the next stage. And all the noises are that, as we thought, basically, or as I thought and many others thought, um, it makes economic sense for both sides to agree. The politics is always thrown in there, but I think the backdrop is more favourable than many people expected. And if you sit here in the City of London, it's been very significant how the sentiment has shifted over the last 20 months. 20 months ago, there was genuine fear about passporting, uh, euro clearing issues. Now we've moved on to other technical terms, but the mood has certainly changed. And I think there's confidence in terms of the financial markets that London not only will remain the major financial centre of Europe, but will remain maybe one or two on the global list as well.